Hi, Image family. Welcome to Image Online Worship Service. My name is Chris. I'm really glad you guys are joining us today. In fact, I really miss you guys. I, I miss hugging and handshaking with everyone and fellowshipping with everyone. In fact, right now I feel like giving everyone a virtual hug. If this is your first time with us, we would love to get to know you better. Please text IMAGE at 62488. If you would like to give, please text any amount to 84321 or visit our website at yourimagechurch.com. Now let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship and the word. Hey, virtual family, I want to encourage you guys this week with this scripture, um, Psalm 46 and 1. It says that God is a very present help. He's a refuge, a present help in the time of trouble. Um, and I just want to remind you of that. Um, even when we feel powerless, God is still powerful. Um, he's still present. Nothing catches him by surprise. So we're going to lift up you are my strength this week because we know where our strength comes from. We know where our help comes from. So God, we just look to you. God, we look to you to be our refuge, to be our strength, to be our, our help in the time of trouble, God. God, we look to you. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, yeah, reaches me. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, yeah, reaches me. And in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name you lift me up yes you do you lift me up you are my hope hope like no other hope like no just press 
press in your presence behold the beauty of your face if i could just press press in your presence and never leave this place again if i could just press press in your presence and leave all my cares behind me i will behold i'll still believe i will just lay lay at your feet i will behold i'll still believe i will just lay lay at your feet right here in your presence oh I could just press, press in your presence, behold the beauty of your face. If I could just press, press in your presence, and never leave this place again. If I could just press, press in your presence, and leave all my cares behind me. I will behold, I still believe, I will just lay, lay at your feet. I will behold, I'll still believe, I will just lay, lay at your feet, right here in your presence. Oh, in your presence is where I want to be. You call me your own, so Lord, I give you me. You own the world, but yet you still want me. You call me your own, so Lord, I give you me. You own the world. But yeah, you still want me. Take my heart, take my mind, take my soul and never let me go. Take my heart, take my mind, take my soul and never let me go. Take my heart, take my mind, take my soul and never let me go. Take my heart, take my mind, take my soul and never let me go here in your presence. Oh, right here in your presence. Hi, Image family. This is Chris again. Um, I just wanted to spend a moment to talk about how big Image has been a blessing in my life. Um, before Image, um, I was pretty broken for to a point. And I ended up ended a relationship, and I was kind of feeling low with myself at that time. Um, and then I joined Image, and the first thing that uh, when I joined Image was I, I developed a, a great amount of friendships and fellowship with my fellow believers, and that was just. One for me, for, for wonderful for me at the time, you know. I had people giving me phone calls to cheer me up. Um, I had people that really encouraged me, and I thought that was just such a blessing. So that encouraged me when I was in a low moment. Um, following that, you know, I did a um, a new members class, and they really helped me understand my spiritual gifts. And that's something else that uh, Image really helped out with is determining your spiritual gifts and then assigning you to a place where you can actually use those spiritual gifts. So I really love people and being uh, associated with people. So they allowed me to be a life group leader. And that was just a blessing in itself because it was really rewarding to um, actually fellowship and talk to other fellow believers and encourage them to actually I learned more about the Bible and me learn more about, about the Bible with them. So that was just an awesome experience right there. And then um, another great point about Image is that you can truly feel the spirit uh, while you're at service. 
Uh, Pastor Joe is an awesome minister, and he's really provided a, a lot of wisdom to us and a lot of um, um, teachings from God that was just definitely relevant to our day-to-day -day lives. And on top of that, you know, the worship was also really good. And, you know, some days I just um, close my eyes and just think and just think about how great God is and that Holy Spirit just uh, um, flows down in me. And you definitely feel that in Image Church. So um, I just thank Image because it, it helps someone that's broken to be healthy again. And that's what it did to me. Thanks, guys. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they fall, but you have never failed me yet. Oh, waiting for change to come, knowing the battles won for you have never failed me yet. Oh, your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me. And I know the night won't. Your word will come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again. Oh, Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise. Again, oh, your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. Oh, you've never failed me yet, and you never will, no, you never will, I've seen you move, you move the mountains, and I believe I'll see you do it again, you made a when there was no way, and I believe I'll see you do it again. I've seen you move, you move the mountains, and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way when there was no way, and I believe I'll see you do it again promise still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness i'm still in your hands this is my confidence you never failed me Time out. Look, my bracelet came off. Uh.
I'll put it back on. You in time out. It's no excuses. Say, you I supposed to be back in time out. I didn't say get out. You and Jayla in time out. Well, let me tell you this, Linda. Linda. My name ain't Linda. So you sit right there in time out, little bad little girl. No, let me take something. No, don't if tell I, me. If I was in here, I would surely take a day off from a, you and in. then a day off from these kids. I'm around the classroom. I'm just done with you. I'm done with you too, but you in time out. Oh, let me tell you something, honey. This is not going to leave. You're going to be in time out? Oh. That's why you in time out right I'm now. I'm sick still. I think so. Well, when I get up out of town and go to bed, I will be glad to go home and enjoy the rest of my life. And I completely quit school because all of you. All right. <laughs> wow. Um... So we're going to talk about discipline today, church. I know a lot of you watching that video, you want to pull out your belt right now. <laughs> right now. Uh, but we're going to talk about discipline today. This is a tough subject. But let's read this verse together. It's very short. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Uh, and it reads, Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline drives it far from him. Let's read that again. It's a short verse. I've got many verses today. Folly. Did y'all see the folly? The foolishness <laughs> in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline drives it far from him. So the title of my message today is called Train Up by Discipline. Train Up by Discipline. Let us buy for a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, God, for your word. Father, we thank you, God, uh, that you are good, that you lead us to truth. God, I'm asking for a fresh anointing today. Remove Joseph from this element, God. I pray that you increase so that I, and that I may decrease, God. I want you to preach. I want you to speak. Go ahead and open the hearts of your people so that they may receive the word, not just to be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word, being transformed. So, God, we bless your name. Have your way in this message. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. So church, we're going to talk about discipline today, because as you saw in that video, kids need discipline. Kids need discipline. Here that little girl had to be three or four years old, and she got some words. And she's going to tell us what to do and tell you what to do. But I want to attack this seriously. I think the video was, had some humor to it, but I want to attack this in a more serious manner, because um, discipline is required for kids. And, but I want to tell us what discipline is not. So let's debunk a lot of these things. So discipline is not to shame or embarrass your child. I've seen it too many times where parents will post videos of them beating their child on Facebook and make it public and get likes and shares. Uh, that is not the purpose of, of discipline. It's not to get shares or get likes or get comments and show people what you're doing as a parent. Because uh, really what they're doing is hiding what they're not doing as a parent, but that's another topic. But it is never ever to shame or embarrass your child. This is serious. It is never to hurt. Your intent, right, uh, is never to do damage to your child. Okay? Uh, they may feel the hurt, but your intent is not to hurt them, right, to abuse them. Okay? And it's never to be to rejoice about. All right, to chat with your friends. You know, hey, hey man, I, I, I tore his butt up, doc. You know, and, and I mean, you may joke about it, but it's not something to be a laughing matter so you can brag about how you used to beat him with this and beat him with that or beat him with. This is not something to rejoice about. This is something a serious manner that we must take important here as far as discipline. But the purpose of discipline, guys, is character development. It is character development. It is to mold your children into the person they are to become. And the intent also is to teach them how to obey authority. Okay? 
If a child disrespects his mother and father, they will never respect the teacher. If a child disrespects his mother and father, they are not going to respect authority, police officers, or whoever's in, 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 in authority, right? So these little things that come, uh, that are, these traits that are formed when they're little, you must handle it in the home so they are not held outside of the home, okay? So we're teaching them to obey their parents, but we're also teaching them to submit to authority. So uh, the scripture says, folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline drives it far from him. So the first point I want to tell you, church, is that kids need discipline. Kids need discipline. Out of all your bucket lists, you may, hey, kids need groceries, right? They need food. Uh, kids need a roof over their head. Kids need, need to be in sports. But parents, don't forsake the, kid, the, the need for discipline, Right? The scripture I love says, folly is bound up in the heart of a child. And that is so true. We saw it. We all dealt with it as parents. Because kids, as they come out of birth, they are foolishness. When they come out of birth. It's all about me, 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 me. In fact, uh, kids' first words are mommy, daddy, and what else? No. No. And so this process of discipline, church, and this is how we look in our relationship with God, because a lot of us come to God trying to change God and not allowing God to change us. And so through the process of parenting, we're teaching our kids it's not your will, it is my will that's going to happen in this house. Okay? Because kids are selfish. Feed me. Take care of me. This is how I want to do no, this is not how you want to do it. That's, this is not your life. You got your whole life. Your life is messed up right now, son. We're going we're to learn today. This is not how it's supposed to go. Uh, but David uh, embraces. He says, uh, uh, in sin, my mother conceived me. Okay? So from birth, we are born with sin. We are born with folly. And we need discipline to guide us in the way that they should go. So if you look at the spectrum here and you have foolishness on the right side and you have godliness on the, on, on the other side, what the scripture is saying is that the rod of discipline, by disciplining your child, that is the mechanism that you're going to drive them from foolishness to godliness. Yeah. Okay? It's not by being their friend. Right. It's not by being their, their, their best bud. The way you're going to drive your child... From foolishness to godliness is discipline. Now, I like that the scripture says far from it. Because we know that kids will test the waters. Okay? And what we want to do through our discipline, right, we don't want them close to foolishness. We want them far away from foolishness. Because some of us, we weren't driven far away from them. We were driven close enough to where we can petty and, and, and play with it a little bit. But what the scripture says, the rod of discipline draws him far from it. Through our mechanism, we want them to know, child, don't go there. Amen? Amen. So the scripture, uh, uh, Proverbs 19 and 18, uh, if you can flip there or if it's on the screen. I love this one. Parents, get this. Discipline your son, for there is what? Hope. Wow. You want hope for your child? Discipline them. But look what the next, verse, next stanza says. Do not set your heart on putting him to death. So if I don't discipline him, if I don't deal with those areas in his life, I am setting them up for failure. Even bigger, I'm setting them up for death. The Bible says the wages of sin are what? Death. If we play with sin long enough, it is going to drive us to death. So the process of disciplining is we are loving our children by disciplining them, but, but what we're doing is we're protecting them from actually taking their own life or doing something that will put them in a, in a negative manner. The number one characteristic of people that are in jail are, guess what? Broken homes. 
the number one characteristic of, jail, of people in jail are broken homes. Number one, no structure, no father, no mother, drugs, alcohol. So this lack of structure is partaking in them not being able to live free. It's funny, juvenile delinquents were asked, as part of a research study, they were asked um, how, they, how they knew their parents' feelings toward them. And almost all of them said, juvenile delinquents, said that they lacked discipline in the home. These are guys who've gotten caught up. And when they, they, they surveyed them, they said the number one thing that, that, that led to my demise was my parents did not discipline me. Number one sign. So church, let's dig a little deeper into this. If you can all turn in your Bibles to Hebrews 12. Because I always had to wonder why my mama said this when she whipped me. Son, I'm doing this because I what? Oh, Lord. This scripture is going to deal with that. Because all the time, discipline doesn't feel like love. And even the parent, when you're giving discipline, it doesn't feel like love. The little book is crying, oh, I don't want to hurt him. Let's, read, let's dig deeper into this. Church, let's start about uh, at verse 5. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the what of the Lord? The discipline of the Lord. Nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the ones he what? He loves. And chastises every son whom he receives. So what the scripture is saying is, because God disciplines you, that is a sign that he loves you. I always remember a coach, my football coach, Coach Charles Kelly, and I always wondered why he was so hard on me, right? He was criticizing me on my back pedal and my, why he, why he was criticizing me so much in film. But the reason why he criticized me so much is he said, son, I believe in you. The reason why God chastises us is because he loves us, he sees our potential, and he's refusing to allow us to live below our God-given ability. And so the reason why we're disciplining our children is because we love them, and we know that God has a bigger plan for them than what they're operating out of. So my second point, church, is discipline is a sign of love. It's a sign of love. But also, the scripture digs a little further, verse 7. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as what? Sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline in which you all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. So a sign that God, you are a child of God, is the fact that you are under some discipline. The fact that you are my son, the fact that you are my seed, is, is a sign of discipline. I can't discipline every, anybody else's kids unless y'all ask pastor to. And I'll add that to pastoral care. Bring them to my office. <laughs> but that's not my role. Okay? God has given me a God-ordained position through my seed, through blood type, through DNA, to discipline my kids. And that's a sign that they're my, ch my children. Amen? All right, so let's dig a little deeper, okay? Because a lot of us feel that we are hurting our children by disciplining them, okay? A little junior crying and, you know. Church, let's read a little deeper, okay? It says, let's look at verse 10. And I want y'all to get this. Because what this writer is talking about, he's, he's comparing God's discipline towards us. He's teaching us to accept discipline from God because that's a sign that he loves us. But look who he compares it to. And he talks about for our parents. For they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good that we may share in his holies. For the moment, and all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields peaceful fruit. So uh, what he's comparing here is 
Look, just how God disciplines is the same way your father disciplines you. Okay? He says, for they discipline us for a short time as it seems best to them, but he disciplines for our good. So I want us to catch this. You don't want your child to thank you now. You want them to thank you later. Okay, the scripture. At the time that you're receiving the chastisement, it never feels good. It never feels good. But now that I am older, now that I am wiser, now that I am married with kids, now that I have a job, now that I know that while I was younger, it didn't feel like my mother was doing the right things because she wasn't doing it for, she was doing it for my good, but it didn't feel right at the time. So church, we don't want our children to thank us now. We want them to thank us Later, the writer says discipline is for our good. But church, I want us to look deeper into this verse. Verse 11 says, it says, for the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. But later it yields what? Peaceful fruit. Yesterday, Sherelle and I were driving. We had date night last night. And uh, as we were coming back, uh, coming home, we put our address in, in, the, in the GPS, okay? And next thing you know, this GPS, y'all, it just started taking us places we didn't know we were going. How many of y'all, has that ever happened to y'all? We started taking a left turn, a right turn. Turns out there was a closure on Beltway 8, okay? But we had to trust that the GPS was taking us in the right direction. We were frustrated. And we know, I have another GPS in the car, and that's called Sherelle. <laughs> Do you know where you're going? <laughs> and we just had to trust that we were going in the right direction. Because, number one, we knew we had put the right destination in the computer. We knew we had the right destination in the phone. And so when we are looking at what we're molding our children uh, to, to become, yes, we have in the end of mind of what we want them to be when they're, grow they're older, but right now as you're detouring through life, it doesn't look like you're heading in the right direction. But you must know, parents, where you want them to go. If you have an end game in mind, if you have a picture of what you want your child to be when they get older, as you take a left turn and a right turn and a detour and calls from the principal and beating after beating, whooping after whooping, as you take these turns and yelling after, if you take these turns, you know the end destination. And some of us get distracted because we're frustrated because we're off track. And we lose sight of the end goal. When you plant a seed in the ground, church, the seed doesn't manifest a fruit until months later. You don't plant a seed hoping that the seed stays a seed. And you don't get restless when the seed doesn't, doesn't, doesn't uh, bring forth a harvest. What you continue to do, parents, you continue to what? Water. You continue to give it sunlight. Because you have the end game in mind. Listen, I know your child is giving you trouble right now, but listen, he's giving you some problems, but those problems, he may become a pastor. Yes, he's giving you a couple of disturbances right now, but he may become a doctor. Yes, I know he's having trouble right now, but he will get married. He will have kids. He will be a great father. And so as, as parents, we must have the end destination in mind. And when we know where we're going, we're not going to give up if we have to take a detour. Yeah. So church, what we must trust is our GPS. And what I've learned as a parent, I've given this a new name. It's called the God planning system. Because children will throw a wrench. Every child is different. And we have to figure a different way to parent each child. But in my mind, I know where I want them to go. 
So I'm not going to allow the momentary write-up and the, the, the momentary issue at school to deter me. I know where I'm taking them. Yeah. Parents, I, I like this verse here, Proverbs 13, 24. It says, whoever spares the rod does what? Hates his son. But whoever loves him is diligent to discipline them. It's so counterintuitive, right? We think if we don't make our children unhappy, we're loving them. But church, you need to make your children unhappy. After you leave church today, you have authority from pastor to, to make your children mad. But that's how God does us, right? We're so, we're so selfish. God is my will. God, I'm going to pray and tell you what you're going to do. God, I'm going to pray and I'm going to tell you how my life is going to go. God, I'm going to pray and I'm going to tell you who I'm going to marry, what job I'm going to take. But God says, not, not, not my will, but thy will be done. Let's look deeper into this, this scripture, church. I hope this is helping you all. Proverbs 13 and 24. Whoever spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. I want us to focus on the word diligent. Diligent is consistency. It is early on you are dedicated and focused on disciplining your child and raising them up in the way that they should go. But I want to focus on some parenting styles, and maybe you can find which one you're in. And I'll close with the one that you, I feel that you need to be in. There's the permissive parents, right? This one feels that all I need to do is love little Junior, a little, little Sally, but I don't need to discipline them, okay? I don't need to discipline I, I just love them, I hug them, but no discipline, no structure. That's the permissive parent. And this parent is actually fearful of their kids. They're scared. Well, what are they going to do? How are they going to react? Right? Who's in control here? Is it the child or is it me? We got a problem. This is a permissive parent. The other one, which is probably one of the worst, is the neglectful parent. They don't give any love or no discipline. Right? Kids just in the house living. Buying groceries on Amazon. <laughs> Raising his own self. Just neglectful. Just ain't doing nothing. That is the worst portion. You do not want to be in the neglectful situation. But here's another one. The authoritarian parent. This one is high in discipline, but shows no love. This one is quick to beat, but slow to hug. This one is, takes, gets a high off of disciplining, and, and really he's, he or she are fulfilling their ego. Their, their method of disciplining in the home is to show who's boss not to develop the character. So we don't want to be permissive. We don't want to be passive. We don't want to be neglectful, where we just let them do whatever they want to do. But we don't want to be this authoritarian parent, this dictator, my way or the highway, always threatening with the belt. <laughs> but there's a happy medium in this one, and that's the authoritative parent. You don't need to define your position, okay? You know in your home who's in control. You don't have to quickly remind them, hey, listen, I'm the dad. You let them know by how you handle your character who is the parent. So this one has the right portion of love and also the right portion of discipline. Okay? And we're going to talk about discipline. Because most of y'all think when pastor said, how many of y'all when pastor said discipline, you automatically thought the bell? How many? Raise your hand. Because that's how you were raised. Amen? My mama beat, beat the mess out of me. Oh, Lord Jesus. 
I never forget this one weapon I got. Man, I got home, and I thought Mama forgot about it. Come on, man. <laughs> I thought she forgot. So the Lord doesn't forget, and Mama don't forget. Oh, so I got in the shower. Oh, oh happy day. Oh, ha- I was in the shower. <laughs> oh, happy day. Because she, I thought I got away. Man. And, she, and back, she used dial soap, right, back in the day. She used to cheap dial soap. My skin was dry. I had no moisture. I hopped out the shower. I was dry and wet. And next thing you know, she was behind that crowd. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Woo! Woke me out. But she loved me. She said, I'm doing this because I love you. That may have been a little abuse. <laughs> but I'm okay right now, right? So let's talk about this, parents, about being, the last point I want to talk about is being just in our discipline. Because one characteristic of God is he is just. He is fair. And we see this every day in our criminal justice system that sometimes, for the most times, it's just not fair. Right? The, the time doesn't fit the crime. Last week I talked about this Botham, uh, Brother Botham uh, in, in, in Dallas, the story that, that's coming out and the facts and the non-facts and the fake news are coming out more and we're finding out that, man, this thing is jacked up. We want justice. We want justice. And it's within everyone, it's a God innate ability and within everyone to want justice. We want fair. It's not fair. We want the crime to fit the time. That's what just is. And so this frustration we feel in America, right, where, we, where we're seeing that injustices, that we're seeing people get away with things that they, they should be convicted of, it angers us. It gets us angry. But remember this with your kids. Because we can be unjust in our application of our discipline. The application of the, cr- of the time does not fit the crime. So one thing we must understand is there's a difference between a misdemeanor and a felony. Okay? Parents, you don't beat them for everything. He was just fixing a bowl of cereal. <laughs> and he dropped some Cheerios on the ground. And you whooped them. Why? (laughs) Oh, Lord. How many of you got whooped for just eating stuff out the pantry that you you didn't eat? Okay, Lord. Taking all the sugar. Taking all the milk. Lord Jesus. And, and, And so, why? Is it worth a whooping for dropping some cereal on the floor? Or is this a teachable moment to tell him, son, slow down. You're going too fast. Listen here. Put this amount of milk in the bowl. Right? Don't, over, don't overfill the bowl with milk. Because then you don't have enough room for the cereal. But then there are some times where they really jacked up. When they have some disrespect. Parents, don't play with disrespect. Okay, don't, don't, don't play with disrespect. Okay, that is one thing that you don't ever, ever accept. Disrespected behavior or disrespected tongue or then even trying to hitch that it's over. Okay, now it's a felony. <laughs> Now it's time for some repercussions. Okay? It ain't time for time out. I mean, it's time for choke out. (laughs) Let's talk a little bit further about just. Okay? We need to make sure the rules are clear. God gives us a word that's defined what are the rules? And if you abide by these rules, this will happen. 
If you don't buy, abide by these rules, this would happen. A lot of times, our kids don't know when they're going to take us off. <laughs> they're on pins and needles. And what we have to do is we have to clearly explain why they are wrong. Why is this wrong? Okay? Why is this the rule? But we first must have, had, we must have some rules. Define it. Draw the line, the, the line in the sand. But not only must you have rules, you must discipline according to what you say. Because here's the thing. Your kids are going to test the rules. They're going to test, is mama serious? And if mama and daddy are not serious, like when we said foolishness and, dis and, and godliness, they're going to stay closer to foolishness because they can get away with it. But we need to discipline according to what we say. Okay, so we talk about just. But here's the other, the last thing. We also need to show some grace. A presidential pardon is a president has the ability to pardon someone out of jail who is guilty of a crime. They're convicted. We admit that they're wrong. But the president has the authority to go in and feel like, hey, listen, I'm going to give them a presidential pardon. This presidential pardon is similar to the grace that God gave us. Because truth be told, we were wrong. Jesus didn't do anything wrong. He lived on this earth perfect. He didn't commit any sin. We were the sinners. And we deserve to be on the cross. But what Jesus did, what we call substitution and atonement, is he stepped in front of us and said, God, take my life and I'm going to pay the ultimate penalty for the sins. So when I talk about discipline, understand this. It's a beautiful chance to show your children the gospel. Yes, you deserve this. And yes, I was going to give you this, but because of Jesus, now you get this. Parents, with your discipline, you need to show some grace. Show some mercy. It's okay. Sit down with them and explain. Say, listen, child, I, you were you are gonna you were gonna get in big trouble. But guess what? I'm gonna let you slide this time because of this. Let them know they messed up, but then show them some grace. Church, I want to go back to our first point. Kids need discipline. As the Bible says, folly is built up on the heart of a child. From birth, kids need discipline. And parents, when you discipline, it's a sign of love. You're not hating your child. You either make them cry now or you'll be crying later. That's the perception you'll have to have. But not just that, church. I want us to be diligent in our discipline. Be committed. Don't be the passive parent. Don't be the neglectful parent. Don't be the authoritarian parent. Be the authoritative parent. Husband and wife, have conversations about this. How are we going to discipline this boy? Because if your kids are like mine, they know what they can get away with mama and what they can't get away with daddy, or vice versa. And they'll play on your feelings. But last but not least, church, I want us to be just in our discipline. God is just. God is fair. So just as injustice makes us angry as people, imagine how your child feels not giving fair discipline to them, beating them for everything. Church, as I close, parents, I, I want us to take discipline serious. This is more than just a belt. This can be words. 
This can be rebuking. All right? Son, don't do that. Setting boundaries. Child, don't go that way. This is all part of the discipline criteria that your child needs. That was an amazing message from our pastor. I'm so thankful for it, to be able to hear it, and that's gonna lift up my spirits throughout the week. Speaking of this week, we have some awesome events this week. On Wednesday, we have our prayer call at 7.30 a.m. On Friday, we have an awesome Bible series for the kids. And then on throughout the week, we have our life groups. So please feel free to join those items. Uh, additionally, just a reminder, um, if you're a new uh, first time guest, we'd love to get to know you better. Please text IMAGE at 62488. And if you would like to give, please text 84321. Um, we love you. We thank you for joining. God bless.